I got my Forest River Salem FSX 21 foot travel trailer uh, returned to me. And it's been about a month at the time of this recording. I've had opportunity to use it only one time. I'm standing inside of it right now. And I wanted to do a video to give you thoughts about kind of this entire experience with Forest River and uh, McElroy's RV in Huntsville, Alabama, which is where I bought the trailer. Uh, so stick around and let me know what you think in the comments. My RV videos have been some of the most popular videos on this channel, so thank you for stopping by. We've been doing some overland videos about overland trailers and shows and whatnot, but this RV thing has been really popular, and I'm planning on taking several trips with this trailer this year, so the story might unfold yet a little bit more as time goes on. So long story short, I purchased this brand new RV from McElroy's RV in Huntsville, Alabama in March of 2022. I took it on a road trip. Well, I drove it home because I live about 10 hours. It's a 10 hour drive to get home from Huntsville. So I drove it home, rearranged all the stuff in it, uh, took all the stuff out of my old trailer, put it in the new trailer. We took a trip to Big Bend. Uh, my wife and I went to Big Bend in May of 2022. I drove this trailer out to the Grand Canyon with some friends in July of 2022. And while we were in the Grand Canyon, uh, is when I kind of first started to notice a few problems. When my wife and I went to Big Ben, the burner didn't work. Now, he tested this burner on the walkthrough video that I have on this channel, and you can see that. But for whatever reason, this wouldn't work. They fixed that. I took it to a place here locally in Texas, and they fixed that for me. That wasn't a big deal, but that was kind of like the start of it all. When we went to the Grand Canyon is when this slide-out room issue became apparent. Now, I noticed it a little bit in Big Ben in May, but it, it got a little bit worse. This part of the slide room right here would not slide in all the way. It would stick out about yay far. And as a res result, it tore up a bunch of the linoleum on my floor inside. Now, they've replaced all that, and you can... I don't know if I got a good shot of that, but I will here in a second. But the slide room would not properly slide in and out squarely. The front part was fine. The back part would stick out about yay far when it was finished sliding back into the trailer. The slide room right here in the middle... This is about the middle of it right there... It would drag on the floor right here, and it tore a big gaping hole in the linoleum here. And after I used it two or three times, of course, it started that in the Grand Canyon. And I'm like, well, I got to get it home. And then I used it again in August in Huntsville to, to take it back to Huntsville, Alabama for a trade show that I went to. And that's when I dropped it back off to them, kind of where the story starts. But all of this was torn up around here from just sliding it in and out. And again, there's there's a couple times where it even wouldn't, it didn't want to go at all because we were, the, the campsite was on an incline and it didn't seem to like sliding in and out on an incline. The motor on it does not seem very strong. So far, I've been happy with the refrigerator. It's 12 volts. Uh, I've had uh, no issues with the plumbing. I've had no issues with, with the bedding, although the cabinet space is severely lacking. This right here is the basically the only two cabinets in the whole thing. There's no cabinets in here at all. I think my, I might have a custom cabinet built and mounted right there and another one right there. Uh, well, okay, there's, there's two cabinets back here, but this is a bunch of wasted space for hanging coats and whatnot. This whole thing should be enclosed or have shelves on it or something. So there's two cabinets back in here that are sort of like pantry cabinets. And then there's one cabinet underneath the small cabinet underneath the sink, but you can't really store much down here because the water heater stuff and plumbing is all down there. So this really, it's, this is only one shelf. So that, and then there's one drawer in the whole place. That's where I've got my cutlery and silverware and whatnot. The refrigerator is cool because it runs on 12 volts, so it runs on the battery, whether you are plugged into shore power or whatever. And then in the bathroom, there's a lot of wasted space in here too because that's the one cabinet in the bathroom. They've got a shelf here. That's wasted space. There should be like some shelves down there or like some sort of like baskets that you could put stuff in. There should be a cabinet that goes all the way around here. And I mean, there's plenty of room for one. And you'd get a lot more usable space out of your trailer if you could actually put some stuff there. So custom builds on that stuff will probably be done at some point in time. I said that was the only cabinet in the place. That's what I meant was it was the only cabinet really for clothes storage. Now you can put stuff under here, but this this cabinet here goes out to the to the side and you can access it from outside or underneath the bed. It's just a big storage bin is what it is. And get uh, outside stuff like jacks and grills and stuff like that in there that you don't want inside. But the biggest issue was the slide room and also the undercarriage. Let's, I'll show you the undercarriage. 
So I had taken this trailer to a local shop in Louisville, Texas, and talked to them about the slide room issue. They were the ones who fixed the stove for me. That, that was an easy fix. It was under warranty, no problem. But they said that they had to submit paperwork to get parts approvals for the slide room and would have to call me when they got approval for the warranty work. This was four or five months after the trailer was purchased. I bought an extended warranty with it, but the trailer has like a manufacturer's warranty of that's like a year, I think. I think a year's manufacturer's warranty, but even if it didn't, I bought the extended warranty and they had to submit paperwork and get approval. Guess what? To this date, that place has never called me. They've never called me and said, hey, we got approval for this. So I ended up just driving it back to Huntsville, Alabama because I had a trade show there in August of 2022. And I called the guys and I'm like, look, I've got these problems. The slide room doesn't work. It's tearing up my floor. And I, I need you guys to look at this because I can't get this place in Louisville to respond to me. And they were like, okay, yeah, bring it back. We'll, we'll take a look at it. So I went to the trade show in August and on the way to the trade show, I stopped to, got, to get fuel. And there was a bunch of bikers that came up next to me. And they said that part of my, part of that right there, part of that um, undercarriage covering right there, part of it had fallen out and flown off on the highway. And they said, yeah, you've got some stuff flying out down there. And I'm like, wow, that's, uh, that's not good. And I looked up underneath here to see what was left and part of it was buckled. So I got un up underneath it and I unbolted what was left, put it in the cab and took it back to McElroy's to get them to look at it. It was kind of ridiculous the fact that, you know, driving the thing is apparently what tore it up driving it and using it. So they fixed all that. So I dropped it off in August. They fixed all that for me. They had it for a good three months and they never called me and they never said anything and they never did any follow-ups. Uh, I called them several times and left voicemails because I couldn't get a hold. I would call and ask for the, the maintenance guy and they were always like, well, he's at lunch or he's not in today. Here, let me take a message and I'll have him call you. And then no one would ever call. I finally got numbers for the owner of the company, left him two or three voicemails. He never called me back until very late in the game. It was probably around the first part of November when he finally called me. And he's like, and I was talking to him for a few minutes and he's like, well, where did you purchase this? And I'm like, I purchased it from you. He goes, I thought you were just driving through town and dropped it off for repairs. I'm like, no, I was driving through town and I bought it and I brought it back to you because I couldn't get anyone else to work on it because I couldn't get my local shop to work on it, I should say. Yeah, so he didn't even know about that. I mean, he didn't even know it had been there for three months and he wasn't even aware of it. Finally, when Forest River themselves got involved, that's when I started to get things done. That happened around some probably probably about the first part of October. They said that the, the, that the RV shop McElroy's never even reported this undercarriage problem to them. They knew about the linoleum. They knew about the slide room, but they didn't know about the undercarriage. So I sent them some pictures. They're like, okay, we'll take care of that too. When I got it back, my propane bottle was missing, which I had a Bluetooth sensor on the bottom of, a $40 to $50 Bluetooth sensor, so I could tell how much propane was in the trailer. That was completely gone and missing. And I asked them about my sensor. They had no idea what I was talking about. Once again, not paying attention. So finally, the, the guys at Forced River I was emailing with, they were like, look, just go buy a bottle and a new sensor and send us the invoice and we'll pay you for it. So I assume they lost the one that they took off my trailer. I have no idea. But they they did not, They said that they couldn't ship propane bottles. I'm like, that's fine. The, the Bluetooth sensor on the bottom of the bottle is a magnet. Put it in a box and ship it to me. I don't think they know where it is. They never admitted that, but I don't think they know where it is because he's like, just go buy another one and I'll, I'll reimburse you. Fine. The experience has been disappointing to say the least. I don't think that I would, I, well, I know for a fact I would not buy another one of these trailers. These, this was purchased in 2022, so it was, so I'm told that some companies like Forest River like to put stuff together real fast to get it out the door because trailer sales were so high during COVID and post COVID. People are a lot more people are working from home now. So a lot more people are hitting the road and they're just slapping these trailers together, trying to get them out the door, which makes sense, I guess, but a name like Forest River has been around for a long time and I really kind of expected more. The most disappointing part of this experience was McElroy's RV in Huntsville, not necessarily Forest River. When Forest River got involved, that's when stuff started to actually get done. In fact, they delivered the trailer to me. They said something about, okay, it'll be ready. I don't remember what the date was, some, sometime in early November. And I'm like, well, I have plans in early November, so I won't be able to come get it for a couple months. And they're like, we'll curry it to you. We'll bring it to you. I'm like, okay. So they drove it 10 hours from Huntsville, Alabama to Grapevine, Texas and dropped it off to me. I thought that was pretty cool. And honestly, I wanted them to do that because if stuff kept falling apart on the trailer, I wanted it to happen to their courier. But yeah, that didn't happen. So <laughs> I was like, hey, why don't you guys put it on the road and test it? But anyway, so the, ex the whole experience has been pretty disappointing. Um, I did ask them at one point in time about returning it and 
the McElroy's guys, because they would never respond to me, they never really answered my question about returning it. Uh, the guy that I bought it from, I, I had when I dropped it off in August, I had told him, I said, you've got two or three other models that are very similar to this one. Let me know how much effort or what it would cost or anything like that to trade this one in and get a similar model. And he's like, okay, I'll work up some numbers and call you. He never called me either. So, and I, I'm, I kind of figured that they were gonna charge me to return this one that they sold to me that's falling apart. So it's probably a conversation that I would not have been very fruitful anyway. Um, I'm not necessarily sad I had to have, I, I got to avoid that conversation. However, it's really poor customer service because they just they just simply wouldn't return my phone calls. So after all that mess, I brought it out here. I have not used it during hunting season, which is where we're at right now, because I have my old trailer still and it's parked in the in the campsite spot where I usually have this one parked, where I usually have my trailer parked. But this one arrived after the start of season, so I just never have switched them out. Uh, at the time of this recording, about a week from now, I'll be hooking this new trailer up and driving out to Quartzsite, Arizona for a um, a trade show called Quartz Fest for Ham Radio. So, uh, and that's about an 18 hour drive. So I'm gonna split it into to three days uh, on purpose because I wanna drive short ways and camp at a state park overnight and enjoy the evening and do some uh, ham radio stuff at the park overnight. So I'm, I'm gonna take my time to get there. So I'm curious to see how well this trailer will work during that trip. I'll be doing daily vlogs about that trip on my channel, on my main channel. So you'll probably get to see some reports about how it's doing on the road. Let me know if you guys bought a trailer during in the last say three years. This is 2023 right now, January. Let me know if you've bought a trailer since COVID started, since the pandemic started, since um, maybe you started working from home or working remotely on a more regular basis let me know how that's going for you let me know what type of trailer you've got and let me know if you've got a forest river that's older than this one and how it fares on the road and what you think about the quality of it because i think that they just kind of slapped this thing together the most disappointing thing to me was not the poor quality of build it was the poor customer service i received from mcelroy's rv and forest river eventually got involved and eventually made it right but even they didn't have the right work orders for repairs and they have no idea what happened to my propane bottle and my sensor. So I, I, if I had to do it over again, I would probably skip it. Let me know what you think in the comments.